رب رحيم مشفق Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We are continuing with our series speaking about how to do public talks or how to speak publicly in our bigger series called Dawa Ilallah and how to be effective in calling people to Islam. So we're talking about when you are offered as a da'i the opportunity to speak publicly, how do you do that effectively? And the last time we were together, we looked at how to overcome anxiety and how to make sure you understand the setting that you're going to be speaking in. And then we started a new section about good speaking skills requires good listening skills. How you listen is probably how the rest of the people are going to be listening. So if you listen like this and you're distracted, probably they're going to do the same. If you listen and you go, but you're hearing nothing, that's the same. So you must learn to listen properly and what will captivate you about the person that's speaking? What about that person holds your attention? So you have to listen to a large variety of speakers. Just because they're boring doesn't mean they don't have content as well. So it's not just because they're entertaining. Sometimes the content is more important than the entertainment. Sort of bring a combination. Remember we spoke about linear existence. We all live in a linear existence from a beginning to an end. And so we have to make sure that we keep a balance. We don't go from one extreme to the other. We like too much content with no good delivery or too good delivery and no content. There needs to be a balance of these two. Okay. So you must be aware that people have a limited attention span. So we must understand the community and the group and the culture that we're going to be speaking to. What is their attention span level? Figure this out before you get there. Don't project your own cultural bias your own cultural understanding onto the group you're going to speak at. I remember the first time I got asked to do a speech in a country, and they said to me, you must deliver the talk. And I said, oh, no problem, and I prepared the talk. And then when I got the notes of the time that I was given, they said, no, you've only got a half an hour. And I said, I've never given a half an hour talk in my life before. I'd never given a 30-minute talk. And I was shocked, because now what do I do? I've got one of my three-hour speeches prepared. So we have to learn to understand the culture that we're going to. Figure this out before you get there. Another important thing when looking at good listening and good speaking skills, what are going to be some of the distractions that are going to be taking place while you are going to be giving the talk? What are the external distractions? Perhaps while you are talking, they're going to be serving meals. Perhaps they've got table settings. People are sitting in tables and chairs, and they're going to be eating while you're talking. Very, very difficult to do. Let me tell you what. Especially when they decide that somebody's calling the waiter and this one's calling the waiter to complain and this one wants water poured and they're coming with a jug. It's very, very distracting. You've got to deal with that. You can't complain because that's the setting that they've organized. I remember speaking at the Yale Club. You know Yale University? They had the Yale Club. And these are all the very, very wealthy people. I mean, they, you're like entrance fee is like they started a million dollars, those type of people. They all got lots of money, too much money. One is driving in a bigger BMW and a Merca and a Porsche and a Mercedes than the other one. And they're just dripping with luxury and money. And I had to talk at a group of people like that, and it was food and eating and royalty everywhere. Like, that's how they behaved. Not that they were, but that's how they behaved. I thought, how am I going to talk with all this... You have to learn to get over that. You get past the bias. You've got to get past what you saw in the parking bay. You've got to get past the titles. You've got to get past the money. You've got to get past all the distractions. So you've got to learn as you go along not to be distracted by all the external things that are there to distract you. So you've got to practice that. Perhaps when you're busy talking, have your family prepare you for it. Remember, practice public speaking skills in front of your family. Don't have it rehearsed. They must just do it randomly. So that you learn how to deal with issues like that. You know, some people get very upset when you're having a talk and somebody walks out halfway through. And they get very like, where do you think you're going? And I've actually seen a speaker do that. 
I mean, that's not the right way to do it. Like actually stop somebody and say, where are you going now? <laughs> like, you don't get distracted and then you continue. You know, don't get all caught up with what happened there. So be careful of distractions. Also, when you're listening to other people speaking, ask yourself, what about what they are saying aggravates me? Maybe the fact that they're moving too slowly, maybe the fact they're moving too quickly, maybe their PowerPoint presentation, their slideshow, something, whatever you didn't like about it, write that down so that you don't make that mistake when you are having to do a lecture or a talk. It's very easy to criticize when you're sitting on the other side. When it's your turn, you'll end up finding out that you make those same mistakes. So you need to look and write down those things that bug you as well, things that aggravate you. And so that when you get up, you don't make that same error. You want to improve all the time, not be the same as. Make eye contact with people as often as possible, not too much. You know, sometimes it's quite scary. You're sitting there and you're going, please don't look at me again. Please, let not look at me again. Because when he looks at you, like, so. You must be careful not to make too much eye contact with a person. So eye contact is very, very important, but not Googling them, like scaring them and they start cringing. You'll soon see if you're overlooking at someone, they start becoming embarrassed and they start cringing away and they start like taking notes instead of looking up. So just be aware of these things. Make sure that when you spice up your talk that you don't over spice it. In South Africa, Indian cuisine is very, very different to Indian cuisine in India. In India, it's not spicy, it's flavorful. In South Africa, it just burns. It just kills you. I mean, it's just so hot that you're literally dying because the food is so hot. They believe in South Africa, if you're going to eat a curry, you must really feel it. So they overspice the food and it loses all its flavor. And you can't taste anything. You can't taste the tamarind, you can't taste all the different flavors that make up a meal. So when you are doing lectures and talks and public talks, don't just give them as hot as possible, as much as possible. Give them tastes and flavors. Let them see the aroma of each thing that you're giving them. Think of it as a beautiful presentation. So you don't want to put all the same things on the plate. Some people just like to eat anyway and just get it over with. But most people want to be excited. They want to have the different flavors. They want to go, wow, that was amazing. Those who want to eat Texan steak and chips will have fun. But the majority of us want to have an adventure when we eat. So that's why your wife comes up with all these amazing recipes. Otherwise, she could give you the same thing every single day. Same with when you're doing lectures. Be careful not to overspice the lecture. Don't put too much on where the people can't consume it. Just give enough for them to enjoy it and keep coming back for more and go, what will happen next? But not fake. I mean, again, you have to be, keep that balance again, that linear thinking. Don't go to one extreme or the other, where it becomes so simple that it goes, I could have figured that all out myself. What a waste or too heavy where the person goes, I can't remember because there's just too much being given. Keep a balance. Also think of what will hinder people from understanding the message you're giving. What will prevent them from understanding what I'm going to be giving? What's all the message that I'm going to be giving? What are the things that will hinder them from hearing? You know, perhaps it can be something as simple as objects on the table. Maybe it can be the noise of the air conditioning in the building. What will hinder them hearing what I'm saying? Check to see the blank faces. The more blank faces, the more you need to go back and explain that point over and over and over again. So this is important to do. And make sure that you are pushing the right buttons on the people that you are speaking to. So that's another important point. Don't push the buttons in the wrong way where you actually upset people. So make sure you find the right things to press on to challenge people to be better. Rather encourage people and say, you know, as Muslims, this is the characteristics that we should have. And perhaps when we're doing dawah for the outsider to identify, you want to encourage them to do that, not push buttons where they get angry and upset. Even though we might know this to be true, we just got to be very gentle with people, very smart in the way we deliver our talk. Remember, you don't know where all the people are coming from, what stage they're at. Many non-Muslims will get offended by the way that you present yourself if you just get into hardcore mode. You need to be gentle. So there's nothing better than going slowly into a topic and explaining it nicely when you're talking. Always double check when you're talking 
Check back to your notes, have a look. Okay, I've dealt with that point. Did everyone seem to get it? Yes, and then you can move on to the next one. So keep looking at your notes and looking at the audience. So don't just move ahead without consulting and making sure that your audience knows what's going on. Well, talking about that, it's time for us to take a break. When we get back from the break, we'll continue, inshallah. A man, a mission, a world-renowned orator on Islam and comparative religion. He dedicated more than five decades of his life for Dawa. Ahmad Didad. We Muslims believe that Jesus was the Christ. This book is an eternal book of guidance for you and for me, for the whole of mankind. It's a solution to the problems of mankind. The miracle is when you expect a man to be dead and he's alive. That's a miracle. Man with a mission every Monday to Thursday at 5.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 11.30 a.m. India on Peace TV. You know, you know, everything in life could use a little improvement, a little improvement. including religion, as it benefits our soul. Learn how to tighten your day by examining various thought-provoking aspects. Like Salah, rights of the neighbor, and many more. So join me, Imam Qasim Ibn Ali Khan, for my series, Tighten Your Day, right here on Peace TV. Our deen, a blessing not to be taken for granted. Our responsibility to obey Allah, the Lord of the seen and the unseen. Strengthen your relation with the Rabbul Alameen in Tighten Your Deen. Every Thursday at 7 p.m. and repeat telecast at 12 p.m. India on Peace TV. Peace TV presents over 100 million viewers at one of the largest peace conferences in the world addressing a sea of spellbound spectators over 30 world-renowned orators on Islam with credentials impeccable. The truth of Islam. Deen is your way of life. It is our duty, our obligation. By following the Quran and Sunnah, we will give the message to one and all. To one and all. With articulation exquisite. Read the book of Allah. Islam is the easy way. It's the simple way. Remind each other. The Muslim is not a source of harm for other people. Collaborate with the people for good. This is the call of Islam. With the mission of spreading the truth of Islam. Do what you can to spread the word of Islam. Wherever we are, live like Muslims. Use your power. Allah is saying, why do you need anything else? This Quran is self-sufficient. The only book on the face of the globe, the Quran. How a human being should lead his life is given in this instruction manual, manual the, glorious Quran. the glorious Quran. For peace to prevail on earth in peacemakers, Next on Peace TV. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We're continuing with our look at public speaking skills and what we can do to develop them. And we said that good listening and good speaking go together. So you need to develop these skills in yourself. Now we are going to talk about when we organize our speech and when we start doing our talk, how to spice up our lecture. Remember we said don't overdo it, don't over spice it, keep a balance. One of the ways, a simple way of spicing up your lecture without having too much masala and too much flavor in it, just keeping a nice balance, is using technology. And the simplest technology we have in front of us in today, most societies, obviously if you're talking about rural areas, 
Maybe they don't have access to this. And that is to use a computer. Computer is your best friend. Keep your desk as simple and clean as possible. This is the joy of having a computer. This is the backup one. That's the main one. So if I really, really battle and I need to see notes quickly, this contains in-depth explanation. That just gives the point form. So have that as much as possible, the most simplistic way when you're talking to the audience. You don't want to have too many things in front of you distracting them or pulling them away from what you're talking about. So you can use the old-fashioned method if you don't have computers and you don't have access to the technology. And a good way to do that is to have like one of those flip charts. You know, with those sheets of paper where you're writing on that paper or perhaps having a blackboard, maybe pre-made sheets of cardboard that you've already done with everything written on and you can just flip them over. As long as you've got something that you're using to keep people's attention. So that's a very, very important thing to do. I always do talks with PowerPoints. But however, here with cameras and lighting and all that, you wouldn't be able to see it at home. So that's why we don't use PowerPoints in this talk. So always use that as much as possible. Make sure that you collect your spices from as many sources as possible. They talk about the East Indian trade route, where people would come in from all over the world, got spices from India. And they found routes and where they, I mean, there were big political changes in the world because of the spice route. If they get the right spices, it changed everything. Could you imagine a society, there were countries that didn't even know how to use salt yet. I mean, they were eating food without salt. You know how salt, a little bit of salt can change the flavor of everything. So spices are very important to get from all over, from all different sources when doing your talk. Think about the way a meal would be made. Different things. Spices can break or make that meal. So when you're doing your talk, think about the spices, where you got them from. Take a bit of, this is an idea that I got from India. This is an idea I got from America. This is an idea I got from Japan. This is an idea I got from Russia. Bring these different flavors and spices together in your talk. Don't just talk about the geographics of the area that you're at. Refer to what you know, and what you know most is where you came from. So it's no use me talking about the politics of India or politics of Pakistan or the politics of Brazil when I'm from South Africa. You will have too many holes in it when you talk. People go, but he, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. So rather speak about what you do know, but it doesn't mean you can't bring flavors and spices in from the other countries that you visited. So you often hear me referring to America, Germany, India, Pakistan, because those are the places that I'm bringing the spices in to make it relevant. So that's a very important issue to know when you're doing public talking. So collect your spices. So that would be that point. Make sure that you are doing your homework before you land up doing your talk. Take notes of what you're going to be talking about. Go around like a researcher. A researcher doesn't just give his paper and say, well, the university hired me to do research on stem cells and I am just going to take my biology book out there from school and that's the paper that I'm going to deliver. No, he does his research. So make sure you do your research. Become like a person who goes and tries to find information from many different sources. Make sure that you do your homework on the topic you're going to be dealing with. Just like a, somebody who's going to be delivering a paper, he will research maybe for a year or two years, do interviews, things like that. Use your personal experiences when you are talking to people. Not only using other people as a reference, but also use your own personal experience. It brings people into what you're talking about. Like when I spoke to a couple of weeks ago about the car accident, where I spoke about an accident that took place twice in my life, that way people can identify with what you're talking about. It's not just a theory, it's practical. If possible, if you're going to be doing a talk or lecture, interview people. One of the series of talks that I did for Peace TV is called The Cross Question. And in preparing this series called The Cross Question, I, I spoke with three professional people. One of them was Muslim, the other two weren't. From different areas of life, prosecutors, a high court judge, a policeman, an investigator. So you want to get ideas and thoughts back on whatever the topic is that you're going to be presenting. So you can quote these people. So this is also important to do. So if you're going to be talking about slaughtering of animals, go and speak to a person who owns an abattoir. Go and speak to someone who breeds animals. 
Go and speak to a doctor about what happens to blood when it congeals and it doesn't bleed out. Find out as much information on the topic as possible to be relevant from other sources, not just from Google. And when you're using this, make sure you use the internet as well. I'm not saying don't use the internet, but also speak to real life human beings that walked around so that you've got some real quotes. And then also go to the internet. Rent the wheel, rewrite the whole idea. The wheel has already been invented, so use what is already there. Use other people's information. And then the third important thing to do when regarding this is visit books. Go to a real book. So real people, real books, and the internet combined together. Don't get all your information only from the internet. Don't get all your information only from books. Don't get all your information just from hearsay. You want to have a combination of all these things. So when you say, say, this website, like you've heard me do a number of times in this series, where I'll say, go to that website, very good information. Go to this book, very good book. Go to this scholar, very good scholar. So you're not just referring to one source. It makes it look like you know what you're talking about. Inshallah, you do know what you're talking about. But it's better if you're using a variety of sources and not just one. There are many different types of speeches and talks that we can give. They're not just one type of talk. They are motivational speeches. They are persuasive speeches. They are political speeches. They are religious speeches. They are dull speeches. They are exciting speeches. So they are all different types. There's not just one. They're special occasion speeches or special events. So you have to change the way you are going to present the talk depending on what is going to be taking place. There was a group in Canada that invited me to come and do a talk. This was going to be a special focused talk to a special group of people. So it's no use me using comparative and all that type of thing. You have to focus it for whatever that topic is. When you come to do these lectures and these talks, it's a specific type of talk. So you have to understand that when preparing your talk, what type of lecture am I going to be giving? What type of talk? What type of series? Is it a motivational speech? Is it going to be a special occasion? Am I going to be helping persuade people? Is it a feel good? Is it a bring down? What is it going to be? So this is important for you to understand. Next point is preparing an outline for whenever you're going to be doing a lecture or a talk. That's most important. Like a storyteller who just sits down and writes a book, it'll never get published. He has to have a skeleton. He has to know where it's going to start what the middle is going to be like and how it's going to end. If you just write as you go along, very, very unlikely that the book is ever going to get anywhere. And even if you find a publisher silly enough to print it, no one will buy it. So it's very, very important for you to make sure that you prepare an outline properly of where you're going to go before you even have any meat to it. So this is very important. What is the target that you're wanting to hit? What is the purpose of the talk? I posted something today on the internet. And on it, I wrote, what was the purpose? So first of all, I wrote purpose, gave an explanation. Target, explanation. Source, explanation. So these are things that we should make part of our habit, that when we prepare a talk, we have a shell that we build around. So what is your target? What is the purpose for this talk in the first place? Who are you targeting at? What are the parts of the body that of the speech that you want to have. Are there going to be five points, six points, 12 points, two points? This is important for you to do before you even start doing it. What research are you going to be using? Whose information are you going to be getting from? Will it be accepted by the vast majority of the people? What are the outlines going to be? How are you going to present the paper in front of you that you're going to use to guide you through your talk? And then, of course, how are you going to end it? The beginning and the end are just as important. If you go to a talk and you only remember the end and you don't remember the beginning, it means that speech wasn't very good. You should remember the beginning just as much as you remember the end. Why? Because they should be the same story. The end and the beginning should almost be the same. The ending should be a recap of the beginning. We've run out of time, so you're going to have to join us again. So let me recap that we have to learn as days how to be effective speakers so that people will want to know more about Islam. So this is the purpose of why we are doing this series. Make sure you join us again. So for me, Arib Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.